What's up, casuals? I had to hop on on a Wednesday, make a quick video because I really do feel that in the next few days, we're going to know what the main event is for UFC 300. Tickets are going on sale very soon. I mean, we got to know something, right? We're, we're about six weeks away. Dana White hasn't said anything. He was on the Nelk Boys podcast, and he said this just a few days ago. And uh, every, everything that everybody thinks about UFC 300 right now literally could all change tomorrow. Do you know right are... now what the main event's going to be, be honest? No. You, all right. I know what I'm, what what, I'm trying. What weight division? I know what I'm trying to do. What, what, but what, what I'm trying to do and what are going to happen there could end up being two completely different things unless I completely fucking change everything. What would it's make fascinating. You, what, what would make you there, there could actually be a documentary right now being shot of, course. of behind the scenes to build UFC 300. It's fucking crazy. And you see some confidence in his discomfort. He kind of makes it seem like he has no idea who it's going to be, that it could change at any minute. And again, seems confident. But in reality, what I think is that episode of SpongeBob where backstage and behind the scenes, what we're seeing is everybody going crazy, right? Because we've heard of them reaching out to certain fighters, but they're not ready. They can't fight this, that, or the other. Also, Ariel Hawani comes out. He says, hey, the only thing that makes sense is Hamza Chemaev versus Leon Edwards. But what the hell is he talking about? Hamza Chemaev comes out and says he can't fight because of Ramadan. Then he says he can't fight. Whatever. It's a mix up. Long story short, I'm going to be breaking it down in this video, guys. But if you're new here, do me a favor, subscribe, comment, and let me know who you believe has the potential of fighting on this card. Let's get to it. All right. So I thought it was important. Let's go through the main card of UFC 300. And what we need to understand is what is going to be on that card? What will this main event look like? Because if we know what's necessary, we know who we could eliminate from the picture. So off the bat, we have Hiri Prohovska versus Alexander Ratchik. Uh, that's going to start the main card. Then we have Charles Oliveira versus Armin Saryukin. Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway, of course, for the BMF. Very cool. Then we have our first championship fight, which is um, Zhang Wei Li versus Yan Xianan for the strawweight women's championship. So we know this main event is going to be a championship fight or it's going to be McGregor level. He's bringing in Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz, or it's going to be something bananas, right? And up to this point, all we have for UFC 300 is hype. There's consistent um, talks about how crazy this card is going to be, because again, it's UFC 300. So I wanted to go down the list. And the first thing I did, and what I'm going to do with you guys, is I wanted to write down each champion and some contenders, and what is the potential of their fight their star power, what they could bring to the table. And boy, does it not look good. Let's start off quick. We're going to go right through it. The flyweight division, Alexander Pantoja, regardless of what they have planned for the individual and the contenders, a flyweight fight will not headline UFC 300. I'm sorry if you disagree. I'm sorry if you feel it's disrespectful. It's not going to happen. Not with the way they're hyping this up. The Bantamweight champion, Sean O'Malley. He's fighting at in Miami, UFC 299. He's fighting Marlon Barra. And when I have the rankings here, if you look down the line for the Bantamweight division, it doesn't look good. Aljo's already fighting in the undercard. Um, Rob Devashvili versus Henry Cejudo. They're fighting this weekend in UFC 298. Corey Sanhagen's injured. Um, and then we continue down the line and you already start losing the star power. So anyway, we go away from the Bantamweight division. The featherweight division, Bokanovsky. He's fighting also this weekend, UFC 298 against Ilya Toporia. That is the only fight. Those are the only featherweights that could headline this. Only a championship fight in the featherweight division, if you ask me. Next, we have lightweight. And this is our first potential customer, right? Islam Makachev. But guess what? He has the same situation as Hamza Chemaev. He's Muslim. Ramadan. They do not eat from sunrise to sunset. What does that mean? That he's not going to go through a camp. Islam Makachev, Hamza Chemaev, these guys are not going to put their legacy at stake going through um, a whole camp while fasted and not, you know, getting their proper nutrition, getting proper training just because of this. They do tend to lose weight and this, that or the other. I don't think he's fighting, but let's go down the line on potential for him, right? Charles Oliveira fighting at UFC 300. Then we have Justin Gaethje also fighting at UFC 300 against Max Holloway. Then you have Dustin Poirier. He's fighting at 299 against Benoit Saint Denis. Then you have Armin Saryukin, he's fighting Charles Oliveira at UFC 300. And then next up, you'd have Michael Chandler in the rankings. Michael Chandler, poor thing. He's waiting for Conor McGregor. Mess around, you get the right guy to fight Michael Chandler, I think he could headline UFC 300. I think he needs a little help. But if it's with Islam Makachev, which it's not going to be, 
I don't know. So I'm not convinced. I'm marking everything from flyweight to lightweight out. And I think that's fair to say. Let me know what you think below. Next up, we start talking on things that could actually happen. And my fight, my headline for UFC 300 revolves around these three divisions. And I'll tell you right now. So we go into the welterweight division. We have Leon Edwards, right? We go down the ranking. We have Kamara Usman. Nobody, nobody is interested in the fourth fight. And it definitely shouldn't be headlining UFC 300. Boo. Bilal Muhammad. If Bilal Muhammad and Leon Edwards headline UFC 300, Dana White has failed us as fans, and I don't know what to say. It just ends there. They have failed us. They have hyped up everything to give us someone who they have not felt comfortable up to this time putting in a main event fight or fighting for the title. So for you to put Bilal Muhammad, even though he's well-deserving of a title shot, I will say that, but he does not deserve to be on the headline of UFC 300. We're talking about McGregor's. We're talking about John Jones. That's who we're talking about when we're talking about the headline of UFC 300. So we passed below. I put a, a sad face next to his name. Shafkat Rachmanov. I like this idea because you have someone coming up. You have an international superstar. I think you get a lot of attention outside of the States, which is very relevant for the UFC. But he's a little injured. He wasn't throwing kicks his last fight. I believe he's going into surgery. I heard that the other day. I'm not 100% certain, but I'm going to scratch him off as well. I'm not convinced on the fight either. Gilbert Burns coming off a loss. He's not doing it. And Kobe Covington, if he steps anywhere near another title shot, I don't know what to tell you. I wouldn't be surprised because it's the UFC, but Kobe Covington needs to go regroup, take a year of PR lessons, remember how to fight, take some risks, and then come back because he is shot on every title shot he's ever gotten. And when he fought Leon Edwards this last time around, I think he lost a lot of fans and he lost a lot of respect inside that octagon. So another boo all right so let's keep leon edwards in check i'm i'm, I'm circling him because we're going to circle back to him next up we have the middleweight division let's talk drickus duplessis just came off that fight against sean strickland i don't see the star power in him but again international superstar he has a backing in the in, in africa i think it's big so now we bring in somebody else to the equation. Someone who said they're not going to fight till like 2026 2027 that's israel Adesanya. he wanted time off but who could decline the UFC 300 main event type of money. Not a lot of people. Not a lot of people, and I don't think Israel Adesanya does so. So if he's offered a fight against Drickus Duplessis to headline uh, UFC 300, I think as he does it. That's our first potential fight that's realistic. We move down the line. Um, a rematch with uh, Sean Strickland, no freaking way, and it definitely doesn't headline UFC 300. Robert Whitaker, he's fighting uh, Paul Acosta in 298, and then Jared Cadenier, sorry, brother, I love him. But he's never he, he's not going to headline UFC 300. So let's keep that in the works. We have Leon Edwards with no potential opponent. And then we have Drickus fighting a potential opponent in Israel Adesanya. All right. So we move on. Light heavyweight division. In my opinion, one of the biggest draws in the UFC, Alex Pereira. We got to write his name down here too. I'm circling back. But let's look down at that division. Who could he fight? Jamal? Jamal's been injured. I don't think he'll be ready. And again... I don't think it's someone who should be headlining UFC 300. Sorry again. Hiri Prohaska, I would love that fight if it hadn't happened, but it just happened. We saw it. It's not going to sell the way they'd want it to. Magomed Ankalaev, not going to happen. Just doesn't sell. And then John Blahovic, I mean, that's who welcomed him, in the, welcomed him to the light heavyweight division, and you know how that went. So we're going to keep his name around too. Next up, the heavyweight division. This person was contacted, and they officially said they're not going to do it. I think this is, this is where we should have started from. The potential, right? John Jones. I think he would have absolutely loved that. Him being Dana White. For John Jones to headline this with Stipe, Tom Aspinall, anybody really. You throw John Jones as the headline, it sells. You got it done. The fans love it. The best MMA. Who better than the best mixed martial artist of all time, right? So John Jones, he's injured. He's not going to be ready. We could scratch him off. So we move into the interim champion, Tom Aspinall. I don't think the UFC is going to put an interim belt on the line. I think it's kind of ridiculous, but I feel like I may have seen more ridiculous things happen in the last 15 years of watching the UFC, so let's not scratch it. But who do you put him against? Cyril Gan? I don't think it sells. Sergey? It just happened. Stipe? He only wants to fight John Jones. And then Curtis Blades? It's not happening. So what do we do? Because we have these potential customers, but we don't have what to sell them right so what i have left here is a few little things and i and i have leon edwards drakus izzy 
Alex and Tom, right? And then there's a, the, the obvious ones that I got to X out. McGregor, they, he's, they said he's fighting in the fall. Unless Dana White is messing with us and him and Chandler are going to headline Uf, UFC 300. However, it doesn't seem like he's fighting, so I'm going to X that. But I wouldn't be surprised if that was the fight. I thought Nate Diaz, I say you throw McGregor, Nate Diaz in the trilogy. I think it's big. I don't like the fight. I never did when it happened, but I think it's a super casual fight that people love. Um, Nate Diaz, I mean, in his last few fights in the UFC and that boxing fight, I mean, he's not the same Nate Diaz, not the same shape. I don't think we get the same excitement. I just think it's their name that's going to do that. But I wouldn't be surprised McGregor Chandler or McGregor Nate. Those could have headlined UFC 300. But since we x out McGregor, they get x out. Um, I threw in a joke here, Dana White being oiled up. That's not going to headline, so I'm going to scratch that. Hamza Chemaev, I spoke about him in Ramadan, and Ariel had mentioned that he may fight. I think Hamza Leon, Hamza DDP, could have gone. I don't think it's a wow. I think it's still a disappointment to UFC 300, but we're going to X that off as well. So now we start messing around with the possibilities, right? So one thing I hadn't mentioned, and I think there's potential, but I don't know if he'll make the weight cut. And I think as a fan, you may not want to do it, but I just think it sells. I think it's it's big. It's it's the final, the final straw in this uh, saga, right? Israel Adesanya versus Alex Pereira for the third time in mixed martial arts. A lot of people don't want it, but I think it's worthy to headline UFC 300. At this point where we are, where you really don't have any fighters, right? So I think it's potential. Leon versus Nate, rematch. Boo! I threw that in just because I think Nate's a big name. And like I said, I could see I could see how they have would have contacted him for UFC 300. But I'm going to scratch that off. Chandler Leon? Doesn't make sense for the title. But I think Chandler's really excited. And if he doesn't want to wait for McGregor, I think it's a possibility. But I don't like the odds of it. Then we have Tom Aspinall and Alex Pereira, but Pereira's crew say, came out and said that's not going to happen, but that would have been crazy. And the reason I, I think that Tom Aspinall versus Alex Pereira would have worked is because that would mean that Alex Pereira would become a three-division champion, not all at once, but in the UFC period. And that is something that is worthy of UFC 300 headline, if that makes any sense. Um, but they already X that out. So with that being said, I don't think we find a worthy opponent for Aspinall. So I think I'm completely Xing out Aspinall from this conversation. Next up, Drikas Duplessis versus Israel Adesanya. I don't think it's that crazy. Obviously, they had that little beef and that terrible, cringy, you know, WWE scene um, in the middle of the octagon when Izzy seemed drunk and he was talking about him not really being African and this, that, or the other. I guess there's kind of a storyline there, but I don't think it's UFC 300 worthy, so I don't like it. Last but not least, another joke here. I threw in Francis Ngannou. Um, we all know it's not going to happen. Um, him and Dana White are not friends. Uh, they will not be friends, and he signed with PFL, and he's just making crazy money boxing. So really what we ended up with was Aspinall Pereira, DDP and Izzy, or Izzy Pereira 3. Either way, I think we see Drikas Duplessis and Pereira. Aspinall Pereira, even though that's x out, or DDP and Izzy. That's all that I see potential in. Leon Edwards, I just kind of have him floating here because I don't think there's a worthy opponent that's available to fight him who's going to step into UFC 300. That sells and that delivers the promise of UFC 300 being the best card of all time. I think we're a little spoiled because UFC 300 is already the best card of all time. I mean, the card from the early prelims to what we have now, which is the co-main event. It's absolutely ridiculous. I don't think we could complain as fans, but Dana White has spoken so much about delivering for the main event. I'm a little, I'm a little unsure of what's going to happen. And I, I, I don't think he's going to be able to deliver. Dana White has gotten it done before. I'm not completely shitting on him. I just don't think it could happen now, but I do want to say Leon Edwards, Drake Estuplessy, Alex Pereira, Israel Adesanya, or Tom Aspinall. Those are the guys we're going to see on there. That's all we have up to now. You might feel like it was bullshit, this video, or it wasn't very informative, but I just gave you every reason why it has to look this way. Every potential fight. And if you're asking for my opinion, what I believe will be the main event for UFC 300, I stand by it. I x out everything it could possibly be. All the potential fights, fighters, they're all booked. I think Israel Adesanya 
versus Alex Pereira, three. What weight class? I can't tell you, but I think there's a lot of potential for it. Guys, be sure to follow. I love all the support. Please leave your comments, and yeah, I'm here to stay.